Hey guys, welcome to today's class. Have fun. Hello guys and welcome to today's tutorial. Um, for today, we'll be looking at African prose named Faceless by Amar Darko. For, for this novel, we'll be looking at the summary, looking at the themes in the novel, and then eventually looking to the analysis of some of the important points or like important sociological issues that were addressed in this novel. Um, we'll talk about the, 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 a brief summary of the novel, the author's background, the summary of the novel, the plot, the themes, and so many other things that were in this novel. So Faceless by Amadako, as the name implies, tells the sad story of uh, what goes on in the life of a poor African child. So oftentimes uh, we see children on the streets, wandering around, probably begging for food or money, you know, but we just don't understand why these kids are left alone, why they have to be the one to fend for themselves, and why they are even left to be alone. You know, as children, you expect them to be in care of someone who is an adult, probably their aunt or their parents. You know, but if you see these kids alone fending for themselves, I I, I feel like it it raises questions on why. This is happening why are they on the street so that's what amadaka tried to do in our novel explaining and providing a graphic detail of what if what goes on in the streets i mean what goes on in the lives of these children that are left on the streets how they fend for themselves how they get food what they do to get money you know where they sleep and what goes on in their their life so that's what um faceless tried to do uh, with that being said, before we go on to the summary explanation of the some of the key themes in the novel, I'll take you through the background of the author. Faceless was written by Amar Dako, who is a well-known Ghanaian writer and researcher. Faceless is her third novel, and for the novel Faceless, she puts on the dingy clothes and mingle with the inhabitants of suburb Sodom and Gomorrah in Accra. And in 2008, she got an award for this novel, which eventually became an official uh, literature list for West African exams, which is why we're, we're uh, doing like an analysis of this novel now, you know. So um, from what I've explained, it shows us that um, Faces was written by someone who went to that street, who took a time to understand what goes on and tried to see how things happen in this slums what goes on what's like the politics how do these kids survive there who takes care of them is there like some sort of um organization of elderly people in those slums that take their time to take care of the kids or it's just a world of your or your own you know where the kids are totally on their own with nobody support or like no parental guidance or like no governmental care or support so having happened to these guys and trying to go on to these cities or like to this slum and trying to see exactly what goes on in this place, it helped her or like it helped her understand clearly what happens and then that influenced her writer, but that influenced what she's written in this novel. And with that being done, I give I'll give you a quick summary of Faceless. So Faceless revolved, or would I say, centers around the death of Baby T. You'd ask me, who's Baby T? Well, I believe the main character in this novel is Fofo, who happens to be a 14-year-old child, left alone on the streets with no mother or father. She has to wash carrots every day to make ends meet. She happens to have an elder sister called Baby T. Baby T was sold into prostitution by her mother's lover. And one time when she was, she had to be given to her uncle to have some things to do with her, she tried to resist and that led to her death. So her death is what this novel primarily centered around. We know Baby T died. And so it was the duty of Fofo and Cabrera, who she met in the market, to investigate the death of Baby T. What killed her? How did she die? Who were those involved in her death? So that was basically, that's what uh, this novel 
basically revolved around trying to uncover um, the death of baby T, who killed her, who were involved in her death and everything. And Fofo was someone who who greatly contributed to this investigation. I mean, they probably wouldn't be able to find out about it without Fofo's, um, uh, some of the things that she listed or gave them. And with the summary done, I'll take you through some of the key themes or like some of the key things that were like evident in this novel. The first one is the issue of attempted rape. So the novel at the beginning introduced us to Fofo, who happens to be a 14 year old girl sleeping on a cardboard at a market in Accra, Ghana. A daily activity involves washing carrots in a market and probably hanging out with some of our friends in the slum. And once she's done with the activities of the day, she has to go back into the slum, find somewhere to sleep for the night and the next morning, you know, the whole activity continues. So for, for basically, all she does is to wash carrots during the day to at least get money to eat. And once the day is over, she finds a place to sleep. Next morning, she continues with her normal routine. And because of this hardship she's had to go through at a young age, most times she, she daydreams or even sleeps and dream about having a home, having a normal family, living with her siblings, you know, like the normal rich kids or medium class kids do. So one day while Fofo was asleep, she was woken up by Poison, who happens to be a notorious drug dealer in the market or like in the slum. Because the slum is really close to the market. The slum is called Sodom and Gomorrah and it's quite close to the market where she works. So one day while she was sleeping, she was woken up by Poison, who happens to be a notorious uh, uh, dealer in, in this slum. He's quite known for raping girls, attacking women, you know. Also, you know, he's, he's known for every bad thing that happened in that particular slum. So while Fofo tried to resist his effort or him trying to rape her, she ran to her friend orderly and explained everything to her friend about how Poison tried to rape her. But her friend, being a, a, a child, as Fofo could not really, you know, she can't really give her the better advice she would need from an adult, you know. A child and a, another child going through the same situation probably won't know what to do to help each other. So Fofo decided to go meet her mother and try to explain things to her mother to see if there's something they could do to try to help her. On getting home, she got the bad news of how Poison killed her elder sister, who happens to be Baby T, and has threatened their mother not to say anything over the death of her sister. So Fofo was left with no option than to run away from the slum to save her life. So that's how the the whole story of rape and how the story of rape introduced us to Fofo in this novel. So after the story of rape, then we uh, were exposed to, the, to how Fofo got to meet Cabrera because Cabrera and Fofo happened to be like the main people who helped to unravel the death of Baby T in this novel. So then, so, so after we found out about after we were introduced to Fofo and found out about uh, what led to our escape from the slum. So now we're going to talk about how she met Cabrera, who happens to be the person who, should we say like a savior now, you know? So how she met Cabrera. So in, on a sharp contrast, Cabrera had a beautiful life. She has a family. She works at, at an NGO. She has a car, you know? So she oftentimes goes to the market to buy things and then you know, come back home. So one day while she was trying to inspect what was going on at the market, looking at the looking at a dead body of a lady lying on the floor with other market women or like other passers by looking at what's happening. For for who disguised as a man or like a boy tried to snatch a bag and while the mob or like the people tried to punish her for what she did Cabrera was the one who saved her amongst the crowd and tried to plead on her behalf. 
and when she did that and they eventually left Fofo and didn't do anything to her Fofo eventually revealed herself as a as a girl and told Cabrera oh she's actually a girl and not a boy and this what was led I mean trying to reiterate some of the things that happened to her to tell her what led to what she did and after doing that then she told Cabrera about the young lady that was on the that was lying on the floor and how the young lady happens to be her elder sister and how she's been murdered but but the the workers in the market are claiming she's someone from the north with no identity just so nobody tries to investigate investigate uh the case so after um after fofo told cabrera all of this cabrera was more than determined to find out what happened, what killed Baby T, and all, and try to unravel um, some of the issues that led to her death, and all. So to do that, Cabrera had to bring in Fofo to try to give her like, um, should I say, shelter? Try to take her in to protect her because obviously for them to unravel something like this that involves drug lords and everything, there's need for for security to be guaranteed because she could be attacked by anybody and anyone at any time. So Cabrera who first of all tried to provide um, shelter and security for Fofo, which was how they met and how the story developed, or I'd say the plot developed. The next thing was how Baby T even became a prostitute because while I was giving you like a short summary at the beginning of this, I told you Baby T was sold into prostitution by her mother's lover. So Baby T's father abandoned their mother because he was told the mother was cursed and you know this superstitious belief of being cursed and how it affects everything about your life. So he had to leave their mother because of that belief that she was cursed. So the mother of four had to fend for her kids and eventually when it became too much for her, she couldn't do it again. And decided to find a man to be her husband or like a lover yeah so with that thought or like with that decision our first two sons decided to leave the house because they can't stand another man being their mother's lover and trying to be a father to them so they left the house which left the mother with baby T and Fofo so um, baby T was firstly abused and defiled by by her mother's lover Papo. So Papo who happens to be her mother's lover was the one who defied Baby T at first. So when this happened, Baby T didn't didn't know or have anybody to talk to. So eventually went to meet her uncle who happens to be like a generous spender who was the one most times giving them money for um you know money for maintenance, money for food and every other thing so she went to meet her uncle and tried to explain things to her uncle and the unfortunate happened again because her uncle also defiled her and so this left baby t in a situation where she didn't prop she didn't know what to do her mother eventually found out about what happened but because her uncle happens to be the one I would say maybe the breadwinner, the one that gives them things in the family. She she decided to turn a blind eye to what happened. So in order to try to cover up the whole situation of how the lover um, raped her and how her uncle also raped her, um, her mother's lover, Paco, decided to sell baby T into prostitution. So that was how the whole that was how baby t even became a prostitute in the first instance so because kako was trying to cover up the whole issue of what happened he decided to sell her into a prostitution ring in the slum and that was how baby t became a prostitute or a, a child prostitute in mommy bruni's brothel so now how did baby t die we know she became a prostitute and she probably was living her life. I don't know. Yeah. So how did she die? What led to her death? Remember, her uncle was the one who raped her. So while things became really bad for her uncle and business stopped going 
as as good as it used to be, he eventually went out to find solution or like ask questions on why things are no longer the way they are. And then they told him, he was told that um, what happened to him was because of what he did to Baby T and probably maybe he was like suffering from the consequences of what Baby T had done about what he had done to Baby T and probably um, Baby T was already a cursed child and him doing that to her kind of like um, transferred the curse and the bad energy to him. So the, it was advised that to revoke or like to change this bad energy, he needs to go and he needs to go and be intimate with Baby T uh he needs to go and get intimate with baby t and try to get a pubic hair which they would use to revoke all the bad energy so that was how this whole thing started so because things were not going on for him and he was made to believe that the bad energy from baby t was transferred to him when that happened he eventually had to find a way to get intimate with her try to get a pubic hair which they would use to revoke the issue and the best person you could find to get Baby T, who was no longer in the house, was to meet Kako, who was the one who sold her into the prostitute home. So when he met Kako, he told, Kako now took him to meet Poison, and Poison then eventually took him to where Baby T was. And so when they tried to, you know, when he tried to do what he was supposed to do, Baby T resisted, and that was how she died and the next thing everybody saw when they came in was to see a dead body on the floor with her head cracked open and um the honko onko committed suicide immediately after and so that was how the story of baby t ended that was how she died and then the the other story was how they tried to unravel what caused that death and everything, you know? So that was the other part of the story. And that was how, and that was basically what Faceless tried to talk about. Now, I'm going to talk about the themes that were prominent in this film, in this novel, sorry. The first one was discrimination against women. The first part about how co um, Baby T's mother, or I'll say Fofo's mother, they're the same, yeah? So how Fofo's mother was being addressed as a cursed woman and how um, her husband abandoned her, how Baby T was defiled because she's a lady, you know. The men had the rights and the men had to leave the house because they couldn't stand it, you know. But the ladies had to stay and they were the ones that were abused, defiled, you know, attacked and all. So it shows how women are being discriminated in our society. The mother who had to take care of her children because of a misconception and who had to suffer because of something that probably isn't even real, you know? And how our children, our two girls, also have to go through the same fate of one being raped, the other being killed, and, you know, having to face some of the bad issues of life. So that kind of, like, shows us of trying to like um opened up our eyes to discrimination against women in our society you know so the next one is like the street fatherism so another one was another thing that was quite prominent in this in this novel was the issue of the street fatherism where obviously poison was the one who was in charge of like the whole brother or, like the slum and he overtook or ran overran the activities of the um slum so it was the one that was getting money for probably some of the marketers who sell who was also the one selling girls into prostitution he decides to rape the girls whenever he wants to you know he had this power so it was like a thug like the ultimate thug like the godfather in that um, slum so, and that was something um, Amada could try to portray in this novel and he linked that street for she linked she linked street fatherism to some of the underlying issues of rape, violence, broken home, theft, dirt, poverty, AIDS, and illiteracy. So those are the things that Amadako linked to um, street federalism in this novel. The next one is um, 
parental neglect. Fofo's father left them because he was told the mother was cursed. The mother who could not longer take care of the kids had to marry someone else. And she watched her two sons leave the house and watched her, her, her third daughter, I mean her third child, who happens to be baby T, sold into prostitution and even, even abused. But she couldn't even say anything to it. I mean, how do you deal with your parents knowing you were abused and not turning a blind eye to it, you know? So that, that issue of parental neglect was was quite prominent around the novel because Fofo's mother uh, turned a blind eye to her sister's abuse and even the idea of selling her into prostitution and not objecting to that. And also Fofo, who had to, at 14 years, had to go out to the streets, fend for herself, look for a place to stay, you know, and have to handle all of those things herself. All of that tries to explain to us the issue of parental neglect and how it can impact the life of these kids you know when you don't have a parent or like a person who could guide you through to the right path it kind of like creates like a problem in their life because then you don't know how to navigate your life so that kind of like so this this aspect of parental neglect try to teach a lesson to parents and I think he also tried to talk about um, family planning because if you cannot, what's the point of giving birth to children that you cannot cater for? So I think he was trying to educate people to about, uh, this novel was trying to educate people to about um, need for family planning. You should only give birth to the number of kids you can take care of. Fofo's father gave birth to four kids without um, any plan or like, without any plan of how to take care to take care of these kids and that was how this issue started because without enough money to take care of these kids and how then do you cater for them their food feeding education you know their lifestyle and everything you, you don't even get to do all these things so that's what the parental neglect was all about the next one is the superstition or like the false beliefs so the very first false um, superstition in the mo in the novel was how Fofo's mother was accused of being cursed, and that was why her husband left her. Also, Baby T was accused of being cursed, and her curse was what was transferred to her uncle, and which eventually led to her death. So the belief of saying someone is cursed because maybe something is not going on with the life, or like something appears to be wrong, which can actually be changed, but this belief of uh, superstition tries to ruin everything, was what the story is all about. It's trying to like, be an eye opener to how these false beliefs ruin things for a family. If Fofo's father had stayed back with them, they probably wouldn't have gone that bad. I mean, the situation probably wouldn't have gone that bad. So, giving yourself a way to all of these superstitious beliefs about someone being cursed and all of those things, Amada could try to explain how these things could ruin a family and eventually ruin the lives of the family. The, the the last um the last theme I was going I'm going to talk about in in this is the failed governance in the country. So aside the fact that parents neglect the kids, I mean the government also see these children wandering around without food or place to stay, but nobody seems to care. There's no there's no social amenity for these kids, and there's no, you know, there's no organized policy or like a program that has been implemented. And enforced for these kids, you know, like a school feeding program or like feed the children program or education program, you know, all those things. It's, it's not it's not it's not existing. Those things don't work. I mean in the particular country and that's what Amada could try to open her eyes to see how the government also takes part in neglecting these kids and having them to face all these bad issues. So now I'll I'll move on to the characters in the novel. The first one is Fofo, who happens to be the fourth child of Matsuru. She's a 14-year-old girl who washes vegetables in the market. She was forcefully, uh, she was almost raped by poison, was a notorious drug dealer. She eventually ran away and met Cabrera, who together they unraveled the death of her elder sister. The second character is Baby T. Baby T was the one who the story basically 
revolved around how she became a prostitute, how she was defiled by someone she trusted, you know? So this uh, this movie also, uh, it's something I forgot to mention amongst the, the theme. So it, it also shows us how issues of abuse or like sexual abuser and and other forms of abuse are done by close members of the family you know so you probably shouldn't think because you have your child is really close to this uncle or to this aunt or like to this family brother or like a family friend and you think they should be left there unsupervised so it shows that all these issues of rape and everything are being done or like sexual harassment are being done by the closest ones in the family yeah so uh moving down to baby t baby t faceless revolved mostly around baby t and the circumstances that led to her death how she was sold into prostitution and how she eventually uh, died in the market without any parental care the third person is maturito who happened to be the mother of fofo and baby t she was told um she was um accused of being cursed and which led to loss her husband leaving her and she having to also um, cater for responsibility of four kids herself but eventually sought the help of another man because she couldn't do it the other character in this novel was poison poison is a street lord and was the one that tried to that sold um um baby t into prostitution also tried to rape um fofo and 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 the like so he was a powerful um criminal in in the slum and he always made sure things go to his own way and if things don't go to his own way he tries to kill them you know so he, he was the major he was the major figure of the street fatherism in this novel the next person is Cabrera. Cabrera happens to be the wife of Adidi and mother of three children. She runs or works at a non-governmental organization. And she was the one that met Fofo and happened to overrun and oversee the investigation of um, Baby T's death. The next person is Odali. Odali happens to be Fofo's friend and confidant. Uncle. Uncle is um, Fofo's uncle who lived in the compound with them and was always providing them the support and um, economical support for the family. And it was also the one that defiled baby T. And the author uses this to buttress the point, like I said earlier, about how children who are defiled by adults are, are done by people who are close to them compared to strangers. Kapo happens to be the dubious, job, jobless, and unscrupulous lover of Fofo's mother. He was the one that influenced or like persuaded Fofo's mother to sell baby tea into prostitution. And that's pretty much some of the characters, prominent characters in the novel. The setting of the novel was set, uh, the novel is set in Accra, with location in the Agbo share market and in the notorious slum called Sodom and Gomorrah. However, aside the, the fact that the novel was sent out or like was like set in a particular place in Accra, Ghana, we all understand or we all know that some of these issues that have been portrayed or like that, that have been like highlighted in this novel are quite prominent in so many countries in Africa. Yeah. Issues of neglecting kids, issues of um street fatherism, issues of um, parental neglect and failed governance, you know. Some of these issues are not only peculiar to Ghana, you know, we have some of these issues in Nigeria in, and in other parts of Africa too. So this novel tries to, you know, tries to open our uh, uh, tries to open our eyes to some of the things that happen to African children or street children left on the streets of Africa. So I, I really hope um, this short summary and um, themes analysis is enough for you. But you can always read the novel, try to give your own meaning, to try to find more themes and, you know, try to make yourself understand this novel much better than I've done. So try to find other materials that you can use and you know try to meet with friends discuss these things to help you understand perfectly what went wrong and everything about this novel but in essence i really hope it really helps 
Um, see you next time and have a good day. I hope the class was interesting. If you have questions, please drop them in the comment section or send us an email. We would love to help you further. See you in the next class.